Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to run you through an example involving the Swedish method of slices. So here we have a slope with a slip circle and the radius, I mean sorry, the center of the slip circle has been marked at, by this point here and various dimensions for the slope as well as the distance to the center of the slip circle have also been marked here. And our sole element here has been divided into seven slices and what's interesting to note is the, the water table which we have here and also the fact that we have two different soil layers so the bottom soil layer has an angle of friction of 25 degrees and a cohesion of 8 kPa whereas the soil layer at the top has an angle of friction of 20 degrees and a cohesion of 15 kPa however the total unit weight has been assumed to be the same for both soil layers. And we're essentially interested in finding the factor of safety for this soil element here. So here you can see the radius has been drawn from the center of the slip circle to the center of each slice. And before we can start this question, we need to be able to determine what the angles are between the center of each slice with the center of the slip circle. So for you to do this question you're going to need to draw this to scale and you're also going to need to use a, protra a protractor to measure what these angles are alpha for each slice. And for your reference when I was doing this question my radius was 8.2 meters so using a one-to-one -one scale that works out to be 8.2 centimeters. And your answer may differ to mine if you use a different radius or if your or if the thicknesses of your slices are different to mine and you'll see in a second what the thicknesses of my slices are. So first we need to set up a table. So I'll just zoom this out a bit so you can see what the entire table looks like. So the first column is slice. So this just denotes the number of the which which slice you're looking at. So we have seven slices. And alpha is the angle that each individual slice makes with the center of the circle. B corresponds to the thickness of a slice. H corresponds to the average height of a slice. So essentially if you look at the middle of the slice, extend a vertical line upwards and we take that dimension to be h. So I guess it's it more represents the average height of the slice. <clears throat> we also have w, which is the weight force of that slice, c being the cohesion of the soil. And the value of C which we use will depend on which layer of soil the base of the slice lies in. So for example, for slices 1 to 5, we'll be using a cohesion of 8. And for slices 6 and 7, we'll be using a cohesion of 15 because that's where the base of the slice <coughs> lie within. There are also some other terms which we need to calculate. So tan phi, L which is the arc length at the base of the slice, we need, to, we need to determine the normal force as well as a disturbing force and I'll, I'll show you what these expressions are in a second, I'm just giving you a quick overview of these terms here, so we also have C multiplied by L and terms which relate to the poor water pressures in the soil. Finally we need to find N minus U. This gives us the effective normal force. And finally we multiply the effective normal force by tan phi. So I'll just now write the angle which each slice makes to the center of the slip circle. So the first one's 25 degrees, 14 degrees, 
3 is 0 degrees because it's directly below the center of the slip circle. 14, 29, sorry, degrees. <coughs> 46 degrees, 67 degrees. And the thickness of each slice, so the first slice was 1.2. The majority of the slices are 2 meters thick, and the final slice is 1 meter thick. And the average height of each slice, so the first one 0 0.7, 2.2, 3.7, 4.7, 5.7, 5.2, 3.6, and 1.3. Just note that these values may be different depending on how you draw the slip circle as well as how you determine the thickness of each slice. So W here, that's gamma multiplied by the dimensions of a slice, BH. So this works out to be 15.54 kilonewtons. So we'll call that gamma t <coughs> is 18.5, which is what we've used. 81 .4, 136.9, 173.9, 192.4, 1. 134.1. And because there are a lot of calculations involved in this table, it may be easier for you to set up this table in Excel just to minimize the computa computational errors, errors. So now for the cohesion, if we go back to our picture. So slices one to five fall within this bottom soil layer. So the bases of slice one to five fall within this soil layer where the co cohesion is equal to eight. And for slices 6 to 7, the bases of these slices fall within the top soil layer where the cohesion is equal to 15. So I'll write that in the table like so. And tan phi, tan phi is a similar story. So look at where the which layer the bases of the slices fall in and use that respective angle of friction. So this works out to be 0 0.466, 0 0.466. I'll just write in the rest. Now these calculations are very fairly straightforward, so I'll only run you through the working out for the top row now. So L for a particular slice is B divided by cosine alpha. So B divided by cosine of alpha. This works out to be 1.32. The normal force N, that's W cosine alpha. So W multiplied by cosine of 25 degrees. That works out to be 14.08 kilonewtons. Our disturbing force T, that's W sine alpha. So this term is found in the base of our factor of safety expression. So that's W multiplied by sine 25 degrees. That's 6.57. Cohesion multiplied by the arc length of the base of a slice. So that's 8 multiplied by 1.32. Now these next two columns are interesting ones. The poor pressures. Poor water pressures, sorry. So we go back to our first diagram. What you need to do is measure the height from the base of a slice to the surface of the water table. So I just do this in a different color so it's easier to see. And you do that for each slice. And 
Now these heights all correspond to a term known as ZW. Now if we go back to our table, you'll notice that we have ZE here. What exactly is ZE? ZE is the effective height of the water table. So let's just say we have a slice here. And this is our water table which runs through the slice. This here is the center of the slice. So this distance here is ZW. Now since the seepage flow flows through the soil in this direction, we can measure a perpendicular perpendicular distance here. And this is just ZW multiplied by cosine alpha. And if I if I stick a piezometer into the so into this slice here. So I just put that here. The water will rise up to this height. And this height here, that's the effective height of the water table. And that's just the cosine of this perpendicular distance here. So that's just ZW cosine squared alpha. So if I go back to this column here, this is gamma w, gamma w being 9.81, multiplied by zw, multiplied by cosine squared alpha. And for me, this was 5.64. And this is the poor water pressure at the base of the slice. And now to convert this to a force, we need to multiply the pressure with the area which it is acting on. So that is L multiplied by unit depth 1. So 5.64 multiplied by L 1.32. That's 7.44. Now we're interested in the effective normal force. So we need to find the difference between the total normal force and the pore water pressure. So 14.08 minus 7.44, that gives us 6.67, sorry, 6.62 kilonewtons. And finally, we multiply this term here, the effective normal stress, uh, the effective normal force, by tan phi, and it gives us a value of three point zero eight. And this term here corresponds to this term here in the factor of safety. So this bracket here is actually n dash. So once you've finished filling out the table, you should have these numbers here. So I'll just zoom this out a bit. So you can see. And now we need to find the sum of this column here. That's W sine alpha. This column, as well as this column. And the sum of these values work out to be 276.6. One fifty nine point four, and for this last column, one ninety three point eight. So the factor of safety is equal to the sum of the resisting moments divided by the disturbing moments. So that's one fifty nine point four plus one ninety three point eight divided by 
276.6 and this works out to be 1.26 so that's it for today's video hope this helps guys